Now, to come to the more traditional approach that you've adopted, and I, I've seen it, you're teaching European literature, uh, plenty of Shakespeare. You've even praised patriotism mm. and the importance of all children, regardless of race, feeling positively connected to their British heritage. Yeah. I mean, in Australia, you get the impression a lot of kids are actually being raised. Not, I'm not blaming teachers, actually, for this. But culturally, we're saying to them, you're inheriting such a nightmare, suppressive, post-colonialist, That's right. uh, racist society that you ought to be ashamed of it. Don't defend it. Yeah. You're flying in the opposite direction. You're actually saying to kids with nothing <coughs> in their own heritage as British that it matters. So, so what's the value in teaching the Western canon? And what do you say to those who say that's irrelevant or, you know, you're, you're, you're making things that were bad sound good? You're instilling them with bad ideas. Yeah, and I suppose it depends on whether or not you think Shakespeare is worth reading. You know, I think he's worth reading simply for the, if only because he's been influencing literature for 400 years. You know, I mean, they say, oh, no, we need to have more black authors. Well, you know, I'm a black author. You know, I've written books, but never in a million years would I have my children be reading my, the things I've written over Shakespeare because I haven't been influencing literature for 400 years. If the day I'm much rather comes... reading what you're reading than some of the other rubbish they're reading. <laughs> well, you know... I'm, I, I'm not even judging one way or the other. The fact is that the Western canon is, a, is what schools should be about. Now, when you get to university, you know what? You can do a whole variety of different things there. I don't mind that, you know. Um, you want to look at feminist literature, black literature, all sorts of things, that's fine. And in school, I'm not saying you can't have any of that, you know. Um, we do, you know, we were just reading uh, with our six formers in, in the English A-level. We're doing Small Island, which is this wonderful story by Andrea Levy, um, uh, who writes about uh, black people coming from uh, the Caribbean to Britain um, on the Windrush and their experiences here. So it's not like we're saying no to any of that. But what we're not doing is campaigning against dead white men. And we include a lot of dead white men in what we do because um, they're part of the canon. They write beautiful things. Uh, I once had a, um, a journalist from uh, the Sunday Times, I think it was. Uh, he came here and he heard all of our children uh, reciting the poem If by Rudyard Kli yeah, Kipling. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, that's very controversial, Catherine. Are you doing it deliberately? <laughs> and I said, but it's a very beautiful poem. And not only is it a beautiful poem, it just speaks to the heart of what we're about, right? We want the children to embody those values that are in the poem if. If you can keep your head when all around lose theirs. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. If you can, you know, treat triumph and disaster as, as both the same, you yeah. know, there's so many wonderful lines in there. Yeah, mixed with um, the common man. Exactly, and not and lose the common com touch, yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, it's just, it, <laughs> We choose uh, literature according to what we think uh, will benefit them in terms of values, but also with the canon in mind, because we want them to go off and be culturally literate. So ultimately, you want them to be able to open up a broadsheet newspaper and understand all the references. You want them to be able to read A Rose Would Smell As Sweet and know what that means. You want them to understand when they hear on the radio, oh, he's a bit of a Scrooge, and you understand what they mean, yeah. you know? Because otherwise, your children, it's, it's not just about being able to decode words. Reading and being successful at reading is not just about decoding. It's about the cultural references that are in the text that you are reading. And there is so much reference to those dead white men, to the Western canon in the West. Look, if, if we were in China, I wouldn't be suggesting this. We'd be reading Chinese literature, yeah. right? So um, we, we, we are looking at British history. We are looking at British literature. We celebrate the Queen's birthday. We sing God Save the Queen and I Vow to Thee My Country and Jerusalem. Uh, and we do this with pride because we are all British here. And the idea that uh, white teachers should be telling brown and black children that they're not British, it's, I think it's horrifying. Uh, m my little brown and black children are just as entitled to call themselves British as any of the white children are. And, um, and we're all together as one. What our Britishness does is it brings us together because when you're in a multicultural community where some of our children are Muslim, some of them are Hindu, some of them are Sikhs, uh, some of them are Christian, we've got children from Eastern Europe, from, and when I say 
from, you know, they tend to be second generation, but their grandparents, uh, and sometimes their parents, are from India, from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Jamaica, from all over the Caribbean. You know, the fact is that when you have all of that difference, you need something to hold you together. That's what makes a country. And that's what makes a country successful. It's what helps to make our school successful because we're all bound together by these, by the hymns that we sing, by the poetry that we recite, by the, the history that we learn, which is our history, as opposed to feeling so uncomfortable about it. Now, that doesn't mean we don't tell them the truth. You know, we don't uh, not teach them about the Atlantic slave trade. You know, we, we, we teach all the good things and the bad things that happen. But, 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 this, this is one that comes up all the time in the destatuary movement. Yeah, horrendous. Britain kept slave for 200 years. But it was the first empire, the first culture I've, and I'm a bit of a student of history, that actually abolished it. Yes. And inconveniently, of course, the people who abolished it were extraordinarily privileged, wealthy, white, yes. largely male, and often Christian. <coughs> yes. Yes. The very people who are now supposedly responsible for all the evils in the world. Yes, that's right. So and when... then they sent out the British Navy yes. to stop other people trading in human misery. Yes. And where's the credit for them? Were those yes. sailors who died in the Royal Navy racist? Yes. So, no. <laughs> but, um, the old... <laughs> yeah. but you see what I'm yes. driving at. Yes. So you've got to teach the good with the bad and the bad with the good. Exactly. If well, and the learn. point is you need to just teach the facts, yeah. you know. So yeah. they'll un learn that. So they'll, they'll know also what the facts understand are. Yes, they'll also understand that slavery was quite, was common. This wasn't just Very a, a, a the white awful on reality. black thing. The, the, the triangle where they went to the west coast of Africa, they purchased slaves from blacks who'd gone inland, yeah. killed off the ones that couldn't work, that had no value. Yeah. Very cruel. Mm. And brought the rest back to the coast to sell them. Yes, exactly. You know, every culture was involved in this. Yes. As Macron said in France, oh, there was a very interesting point, I'm paraphrasing, uh, by all means criticise your culture, but know what it is first. Yes. Yes, although it is also true that a, a lot of the, uh, you know, what, what made Britain rich came from that slave trade. And, 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 and that's something that we all need to be aware yeah. of and accept, mm. and that's fine. I mean, But then you the know, British people were courageous enough to say, we're going to stop it. And that impact... Despite the wealth, yes. Yeah, but it, it had a negative impact on British wealth mm. for many decades, the yes. economists will tell you. Yes. So they willingly took on a lowering in their standard of living and in their wealth to achieve this great social end. That's, yes. We ought to know about that. Are yeah. we prepared to make those sort of sacrifices? Yes. Well, I don't anyway, know. I'm, I'm, People these days don't make I'm sorry. any sacrifices on all <laughs> kinds of levels. <laughs> well, I'm guessing some of your kids would be prepared to entertain on what I sort of day, you know. It's true. <laughs> uh, our children um, understand gratitude. We teach them gratitude. Uh, we teach them not just to be grateful to their teachers, but to be grateful to their parents and to their wider families for looking after them. And um, the thing is, is that however little you have, you will always have more than somebody else. <laughs> and you you need to be grateful for that. We teach them about being grateful for the fact that we all live in Britain. You know, like it's a great country. <laughs> um, we have the rule of law. We have democracy. We have, you know, we can choose how we want to live. You can choose to be gay. You can choose to get married or not get married or do whatever it is you want. And nobody's going to hassle you for it. You know, um, it's it's a great thing to be able to live in a country like that when you think there are so many countries out there where, well, if you're gay, they'll push you off the top of a building, you know. Um, and it's just, uh, it's unfortunately these days, the... Um, the argument is very skewed, and some of the law, you know, the loudest voices out there um, are only critical of uh, some people, mm. namely people in the West, um, and often politicians they might be critical of who have more of a conservative point of view. Uh, people like me, they're very cr critical of because uh, I'm a traditionalist and I believe that. Um, no, I love my country. <laughs> it looks like you've got plenty of parents who agree with you. Yes. They're queuing up to get in. Yes, that's true. Although I have to say, we are in the inner city, so I think a lot of them don't necessarily understand yeah. all of those kinds of details. They might just hear it's a good school, so they want to send it, their child here. Mm. I think some of them it will just be because they're living next door and they send mm. their child to the school next door. You know, not all families, of course, are, uh, are engaged 
with their child's education and because this is the inner city. That's the other thing to remember is that these children in the inner city, too many of them do not have parents who are super engaged. Yeah. And so if you as a school don't scaffold them and support them, they haven't got anybody. Yeah.